All right. Hello, Math 7 friends. Today, Lesson 5.8 on factoring linear expressions, we are going to obviously start with some vocab. So the first vocabulary word is a monomial. Mono means one, um, which is an expression with only one term. So some examples of that were, would be um, like seven or uh, y would work or three x. Those are all monomials. There's just one term. But some non-examples would be like three x plus two. That no longer is a mono monomial. Or like uh, seven parentheses x minus four. Um, those are non-examples of monomials. Okay, and then for factors, it is a value being multiplied. So that's what's being multiplied to the other thing. So for instance, this right here, this number seven in that non-example, that's actually a factor. It's what's being multiplied to the rest of the expression. And then factored form is an expression written as the product, we know what that means, of factors. All right, there are vocabulary words. Let's go ahead and practice finding GCFs. So for finding GCFs, we're actually going to look at the coefficients, which are the numbers that are attached to the variables, and you're going to list out the factors of each one of these. So right there for the for four, I know that the factors are one and four and two and two. So obviously just writing two once makes more sense. And then for the number 12, you're going to list out those factors. It's one and 12, two and six, three, four, and then six and 12, like I just listed. And then you're finding the G, which means the greatest. So if you're listening to these instructions, go ahead and write the word greatest, right by the word GCF. Um, and the greatest common factor between these two numbers is the number four. So again, if you are listening, go ahead and write the word greatest next to GCF right here. Um, GCF, you're going to write the word greatest. And then right here, I know that they have four in common. That's the greatest common factor. But what, since it's algebraic expressions, that means that you are going to potentially have some variables. So you're going to look to see if they have any variables in common. So right here, you can notice that they both have an X in common. So your GCF is actually 4X is what you'll write out. Uh, some of you can see that without listing the factors of each one of those numbers, which is totally fine. But just make sure your final answer um, does have that GCF and any variables that they have in common. All right, let's go over here. 18, I know um, 1, 2, 3, 6, um, 9, and 18. And then we also, for 20, have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So between those two numbers, I can see that my GCF, oh, bummer, is only a 2. So then therefore you would write uh, GCF is 2, um, but they also have the letter A in common. So you're going to write A. So notice that that second term does have a B, um, but since both of them don't have that in common, they don't have that factor in common, so therefore you're not going to write it. So you would just write 2A. And then our last one, we have um, 12, so those factors um, – 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, and then for 36, oh, okay, also notice there's no need to really write these out, right, because I know that 12 is in fact a factor of 36, so I'm just going to go ahead and waste my, well, not waste my pencil ink, and I don't even use, or I'm not even using pencil ink, but I know that 12 is going to be our GCF, so right here, GCF, we know is 12, and then any variable that they do have in common, notice they both have C and D in common. So you would write 12 CD. All right, go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to try to come up with the GCF for numbers 4, 5, and 6. Go ahead and pause. All righty, take a look at these answers. The first one is just 4. Number 5 is 5X. And then number 6 is 14N. Um, if you have any questions on any of those numbers, make sure that you put it in that last questions on this video and your teacher can go over these questions tomorrow. All right, let's look at the next section.
All righty, in the next section, um, we are going to keep that same idea of finding the GCF, but then we're writing it in factored form. So we talked about up above that factored form is the product of two factors. So we are first going to find the GCF. So right here, I know the GCF between these two um, terms is the number three, and it's just three, right? It's not three X, because both of them don't have an X in, in common. So you're gonna divide both of these by three. Now, whenever you're multiplying or dividing with a variable and then an, uh, just a constant or the non-variable, you're just taking three divided by three and you get one, but then you must keep that X because I still have X. Um, and then nine divided by three is three and you're just going to bring down this plus sign. It's still just a positive three. So what this means is that um, the number three is a factor and 1x plus 3 is a factor. So to write this in factored form, you just have to put them together with um, multiplication in between the two. So how you're going to do that is we're going to write the GCF, so 3 parentheses, and then we got 1x left over plus 3. Close our parentheses. Now, make note that right here, this 1x, if I write 1 x, it's the same thing as just x. So you could have also written this as the expression 3 parentheses x plus 3, which is totally fine. But just so that you know, 1x and x are the same exact things. Okay, then for the next one, I got 4 and I got 35. So I know my factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. And then if I look over at the number 35, I know that 2 and 4 don't go in to 35. So I know that there is no like factor other than the number one. And dividing by one isn't gonna do anything. So right here, this one you're actually gonna put cannot be factored. Because there is no number I can divide it out. Okay, and then the next one right here, I know the number three goes into 33. So I know my GCF is three. Um, so I'm going to divide this term by 3. I now have 1. I'm going to divide this term by 3. I now have 11y, and you're going to bring down your plus symbol. However, you're not done. This is what everyone always forgets is because, remember, factored form is the product of two factors. So you have to list that factor 3, parentheses, 1 plus 11y's. Go ahead and close those parentheses. So this is in factored form because 3 is a factor and 1 plus 11y is also a factor. And then lastly, 4 and 28. I know that the number 4 goes into 28. So my GCF or one of my factors is 4. So I'm going to divide this by 4. I get 1x or just x. And then uh, 28 divided by 4 is 7. And then bring down this minus sign. So then your factored form would be the GCF 4 parentheses x minus 7. So then that's our final answer. It's the product of the two factors because the GCF is still a factor. Greatest common factor. All right, go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to try each of these, um, these examples. Alrighty, for question 11, I went ahead and listed out the factors because there are lots of them, right? So my greatest common factor should actually be 12. So it is 12. I'm going to put that out front. And when I divide both of these terms by 12, I know 36 divided by 12 is 3. Attach the x, bring down the minus sign. And then 24 divided by 12 is 2. So my final answer here is 12 parentheses 3x minus 2. Now, a quick way to also check this would be to look at the factors on the inside of the parentheses. On the inside of the parentheses, I just have 3 and 2 left over. So because 3 and 2 can't be fully simplified, like there's no other factors that are the same except for the number 1. So I know I have um, the greatest common factor of 12. But some of you may have used um, 6. And so if you use 6, you would have 6 parentheses, um, 6x minus 4. And 6x minus 4 can continue being factored. So then, therefore, it would like kind of let you know, hey, I didn't grab the biggest GCF. And then the next one, number 12, I knew that 2 was the only thing that went into both of them. So I went ahead and divided both of these by 2. I put that out front. This is always what people forget is this 2 out front. So your final answer is 2 parentheses 7y plus 8. 
And then the next one, number 13, there are no factors um, besides one for five and 21 that uh, can go into each, either one of those. So that one is it cannot be factored. And then for number 14, this one is a little bit more challenging. I want the start variable to be positive, which means that I want to divide this by negative seven. Sure, they both have seven in common. But when I divide by negative seven, my GCF is going to be negative seven. So I'll put that out front parentheses. And then what's left over a negative divided by a negative of a positive. So 49 divided by seven is seven, include the X. And then right here, before I was like, hey, go ahead and bring down this plus sign, right? And then I said seven divided by negative seven. So a positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative um, one parentheses. But it's unnecessary to have both of these, the plus and the minus sign right next to each other. So if you'd like to get this kind of in simplest form, the final answer would be negative 7 parentheses 7x, and it's going to be a minus 1. So whenever you have a minus and a plus sign right next to each other, um, you know you can eliminate that plus sign, and you're just going to have a subtraction symbol. So hopefully these notes do make um, some sense. We are going to get lots of practice going on before we um, are going to quiz and then test. Uh, good luck on factoring.